Hey guys and ghouls, welcome back to the Cozy Ghost. I'm your host, October, and we are back with First Snow. I am really trying to get this game done because it is really good and I really like it. But uh, I don't know if you guys have been keeping track of how long this series has been going, but I started this game in January and it is now September. So, <laughs> so I am very excited to finish this game. Let's let's get right right into it. With a wave to her father as his car disappears down the road, Eve takes my hand in hers as we start off down the street. With the weather particularly nice today and Eve needing to burn off some energy, we decided to take a grand tour of the local town. Her pace is thankfully slower than her sister's, with my sore legs needing a rest after the excursion yesterday. Ooh, yesterday the hike and the fight. Ooh. I had wanted to do this with Eileen, but she couldn't be dissuaded from painting in her room. There wasn't mu much fight in me to argue with her, so that was that. Maybe some time away from hers for the best. Even people who like each other sometimes need a break, I think. Definitely. The old wooden storefront hardly looms over us, being mostly just a couple of stories tall, themselves dwarfed by the forested hills behind. Strolling around is a... Strolling around is a much nicer way to take it in than clutching to Rose on the back of her bike. It's nice here. Mm. Kind of boring sometimes, though. Thinking about it, I could see that being the case for a child. The few people out and about today are basically all graying older folk hobbling along as I look around us. Such a pleasant atmosphere has its downsides. My thinking's interrupted by a ping from my pocket. As we stop for a moment, I pluck my phone from my pocket and unlock it. Hi, Allison. How are things going? Who is it? Just my dad asking how I'm doing. Your dad doesn't even have a profile picture? As she stands on tiptoes trying to look over the phone in curiosity, I get an idea. Crouching a little and bringing the phone level with her, she sets herself back down. I try to hold it steady. Selfie. I'll send him a photo. Stay still. In response, Eve fixes her posture to stand up prim and proper, dusting herself off to look as good as possible. It's charming how seriously she takes this. With a tap and click, the photo is saved and quickly sent on to Dad as a message. Friend's sister is showing me around. Friend, not girlfriend. Sounds like you're having fun. Yep. Yay! How are things there? Back home, safe and sound. Your brothers are driving us nuts. We'll be glad to have you back. Sounds like things are the same as ever, then. See you in a few days. Miss you. Heart. Take care. Enjoy the last of your trip. I smile and lock the phone once more, slipping it back where it belongs. I have to stop myself from counting down the days left here. I don't want to start regretting this trip and once again wishing I was home. Hey, what's your family like? Totally different, I'll say that much. I have mom, dad, three brothers, and a cat. We all live in the city and it's really busy and noisy every day. They're nice though. It'll be good to be back home. Satisfied with my answer, Eve pulls me forward as we begin our tour in earnest. As she points out this and that, though, my thoughts aren't about Eve or my family, but stuck on wanting to be doing this with Eileen. Just as it was whenever I watched her paint, I feel like I'm watching her life from outside rather than sharing our time together. I don't doubt that she likes me. She certainly likes me in a physical sense. I like those times too, but I feel like I'm the only one who wants us to become closer in more than just a physical sense. I'm the one who planned our first date. I'm the one who asked to come here. Now I'm wondering if Eileen ever wanted any of this. The one time I thought Eileen wanted to share something with me, she was just using me to distract herself from her problems. Problems that she wouldn't talk to me about. All I can do is sigh. Mm. What's wrong? Just a shame your sister was busy, that's all. Allison! Is Eileen having a good time in college? Huh? Why do you ask? Mom said she was worried about Eileen since she moved out. But when Eileen's around, they always argue. Oh. Is she really alright? 
Eve says this with genuine worry in her voice. Eileen's parents really do care about her, even if she doesn't think so sometimes. Eileen's fine. Every day she's making pretty paintings and having fun with friends, and she's helped me a lot since I met her. Eileen's always been fine, now that I think about it. Ever since we met, I've merely watched her as she lived her life. Since getting together, has anything really changed? For all our intimacy, she still treats me the same way she always has, all while relentlessly pursuing her ambition. No, I can't think like that. I'm getting myself wound up. Your parents are nice, aren't they? She gives an enthusiastic nod. They think you're nice too, since you hang out with me. <laughs> At least they think I'm useful, I suppose. I never realized it before, but having a little sister is really fun. Not that I mind my own siblings, but three older brothers aren't quite the same company. Let's see more of town before we have to get back then, okay? Gotcha. Yeah! Finally back from our trip after a bus ride back, Eve bounds through the door as I drag myself in and close it behind us. I don't know how kids can have so much energy. Eileen stands with a glass of water, looking nonplussed at our entrance before noticing the new book tightly held under Eve's arm as she skips over to the living room sofa. Allison. You didn't. I can spare that much money. It can be her Christmas present for me. You're enjoying having a little sis, aren't you? She got me. How's the painting going? Hmm. You need to go down to the city soon for supplies and stuff. No art supplies stores around here. Wanna come? So I'm along for the ride as usual. I feel bad for thinking bad thoughts about her, but I can't muster any real want to come along. I'd just be baggage while she did her thing. Sorry. Sorry. Still tired from yesterday. Sure. Suit yourself. I'll be straight back afterwards. We're having pizza for dinner tonight, by the way. Ah, good. The two of us briefly wonder how to continue conversation, but can't think of anything to add. With that, she wanders back to her room to keep painting. I feel like I should follow, at least to see how her painting's coming along, but my feet feel stuck. Left to mill about alone, as Eve can be heard happily humming to herself from the sofa, I decide to turn around and head back out the door for some air. The warm afternoon air is starting to fade by now, causing me to push my hands in my pockets to try and save whatever warmth I can. At the rate the weather's going, it's sure going to be a cold Christmas. At least the snowmen are liking it, still standing tall as they guard Eileen's house from the front yard. It's easy to lose sight of one inside, but her house sure is big. Even the yard's pretty spacious, but I suppose living so far from town would help that. A nice house, enough money to live alone on her parents' dime, trips all the way to Germany. Eileen really did get a good start in life compared to me. It annoys me a little that she doesn't seem to see that, especially when it's her parents paying for her apartment. Painting alone in a room, hiking alone in the woods, living alone in an apartment too big for one person. Is that really independence? Moving out, away from her parents, but still relying on them for everything? Try as I might to get close to Eileen, I can't help but feel like I'm just hanging around her. When I'm looking at her back, is it just because she's always ahead of me? Why shouldn't she turn around to look at me? I wonder what I really am to Eileen. The fact that I can't work out an answer makes me restless. As a lump starts to form in my throat, as a lump starts to form in my throat, I quickly decide to wander back inside. All I'm doing is making myself feel worse by dwelling on all this. I should make the most of my time here, given I only have a few days left. I should talk to her, but what do I know? It's pretty. The park makes for a peaceful sight as we enter, the three of us slipping between the low wooden barriers as we step from the rough concrete car park onto the snow-covered grass. A bundled up Eve clings tightly to Eileen, and with and I, with both of her little hands, each of us on either side of her. A bag of old bread swings away at Eileen's other side, destined for the local wildlife. I'll feel like a killjoy to say bread isn't good for them. With the two of us acting as babysitters thanks to Eileen's parents working, we decided it'd be better for us to head inside than let her vegetate on the couch watching cartoons all day. Oh, head outside. Tired from the walk, I take a seat on the swings facing the lake as Eileen mothers around Eve. 
Tugging at the girl's scarf to pull it tight, Eileen hands over the bag of bread for the ducks before ruffling her hair affectionately. I wonder if that's why Eileen does that to me, now that I think of it. With her sister having finished her fussing, Eve turns and starts for the shore while Eileen watches her intently. Be careful around the water, Eve. Okay. The ducks peacefully floating about the lake start flapping excitedly, quickly realizing that the girl waddling towards them comes bearing food. Satisfied that Eve isn't going to topple over in her rush and flop in, Eileen wanders back towards me and seats herself on the other swing, all the while keeping a keen eye out. It looks like nobody else is here at all. It is getting rather cold, but it's more likely people being busy with the holiday sales. I think I'd like I'd think the lake to be frozen over given how still it is, save for the birds floating about. She's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting how we shifted immediately away from Alice to Eileen. While Eileen smiles warmly at her sister, I struggle to do the same. I'll soon have to make the call for Rose to pick me up, after all. Leaving behind this lovely town. Eileen, Eve, their parents. I'm not sure when I'll get to see them again. Eve clumsily crumble, crumbs the bread in her gloved hands, chucking it onto the lake with varying degrees of success. Half the crumbs end up dropping to the ground at her feet, but she doesn't seem to notice. Is something up? You've been kind of quiet over the last couple of days. I really don't get how you're such an upbeat person in general, though. What? Nor do I get how she's so comfortable being so alone, so apart. The more I'm around her, the more different I feel we are. Introvert, extrovert? I don't know. I just think it's better to see the best in people. I have to admit, I wish I could be like that. Why not try being more friendly in general? Every time I see you, you're closing yourself off to focus on painting or trekking out in the wilderness. The more I get tied up with people, the harder it is to do what I want to do. You should know that better than most, with Caprice and all. The fuck is that supposed to mean? You shouldn't talk so badly about her all the time. She just wants everyone around her to enjoy themselves. I'm a little taken aback at how firm my tone is, but I'm starting to get tired of how she's always so critical. I force myself to keep my eyes on Eileen, despite her own surprise. Maybe it's for the best if I clear the air and talk about this directly. Our concentration is broken by Eve giggling loudly in the distance, the birds enthusiastically crowding around in front of her and occasionally flopping away at the water. Come on, what's this about? I get the feeling something's on your mind. No! It feels like we're hanging around each other, but not actually. I pause for a moment to phrase my thoughts correctly, trying not to let emotions cloud my thinking. Eileen, thankfully, waits for me to finish. I guess it feels like I'm along for the ride. It doesn't feel like I'm really there with you. What, here? We've been spending a lot of time together, and we've had some nice time to ourselves, right? Right, but we... <sighs> is that all this is to you? As silence reigns, the fact that she even needs to think about this is a bit upsetting. I don't know how relationships are supposed to go, but it feels like we both have very different ideas about it. What am I supposed to say? Is there something more you want from me? I'm just not as clingy as you are. Clingy? Clingy? I just want to be by your side. You would have gone off without me the other day if you felt like you could. Yeah, but I was being considerate of your feelings. Is that a problem? It... It just feels like you'd rather I wasn't there. I like being with you, you know that. But I've been fine on my own all this time, too. I don't need you to be there. Even though I always wanted to spend more time with her, she doesn't even care whether or not I'm there. You have it so together. I've always admired that about you. Maybe you have it too together. Before coming here... I didn't realize how good a life you left behind when you moved away. To drop everything here, including Eve, to pursue art at a community college? From the way you talked about your family, I thought they must be really hard on you. They just want what's best. I mean, the apartment you have seems like it wouldn't be cheap for them to cover, for one. Because I don't hear that enough from them every time I'm around here. 
<sighs> Can we just drop this? I like being around you because you don't bring up that stuff. Is that all you want from me? A quiet girlfriend who doesn't ask questions and leaves you alone? Eileen takes to her feet, her mood significantly souring. While I freeze up, I don't feel like shrinking from her for once. Am I only here to distract you from your parents? You're the one who begged to come. I told you that you could come precisely because I didn't think you'd go sticking your nose into my life. But I want to learn more about you. That's what having a relationship is. That's up to me, not you. This is why you shouldn't have come in the first place. She points in the general direction of her house. I'm used to enduring their crap already. I didn't need you here to make things worse. I'm already hearing from them about how my girlfriend has a better life path than I do. So that's my fault. I think I'm shaking. My eyes are stinging from salt waiting to flood out. Maybe they have a point. Did you think any of this through beyond just escaping them? Is that all our relationship is too? I had my life on track before I even met you. Just because you and Caprice want to come along and try to push me around, it doesn't mean I'm going to derail myself. Is that how she thinks of it? Didn't she agree to the art club? Didn't she agree to date me? Didn't she say she loves me? Break it off, Allison. Break it off. Hearing the sound of footsteps in the snow, the two of us turn in unison towards Eve, standing a few yards away with an empty bread bag held in her hands. Is something wrong? Not even a little bit, babes. Eileen looks to me for a long while, her face full of frustration. I don't think either of us really knows what we should say next, even without Eve being around. Settling herself with a long breath, Eileen smiles as she turns back to Eve. I don't think I'll ever get used to how she shifts her entire demeanor like that. Everything's fine. Don't worry. It's about time we headed back home. But I want to keep feeding the ducks! We don't have any more bread! without any more bread come on it's about time we had some food ourselves yeah i'm i am a hundred percent on allison's side right now because like sure caprice can be annoying but like you didn't have to say yes yeah it's just very frustrating because <sighs> yeah it's like she seems to only care not Allison, um, Eileen seems to only care about how all of this affects her. Like, and she's always putting the blame on other people. It's like, sure, you left them because you wanted to pursue art, but you agreed to have a girlfriend, and part of that relationship is sharing your life. So if the only reason you brought, like, you let your girlfriend come was to distract you from that, you should have told her that in the first place. Eileen is pissing me off. I used to like her a lot, now she's just getting on my nerves. She gives one final glance back before taking Eve's hand in her own and walking on ahead. I thought I was someone important to Eileen, but I feel like more I'm just being used to make herself feel better while she lives for her work. I know I have my faults. I'm not good enough at art to share the hobby with her, and I was barely even able to help cook a simple dinner. I'm trying to get better, though, and that's thanks in part to her. The image I had of her is starting to become difficult to see. Who was the Eileen I admired? The beautiful girl in the beautiful apartment with the beautiful paintings? This Eileen is someone so at odds with her family, she decided to only care about herself. As I watch her leave hand in hand with Eve, she looks ever farther away from me. Maybe she's only so far away because we aren't walking on the same path.